had, uh, then people aren't necessarily going to hear those warnings. I think more importantly, people won't heed them, such as the desperation on the ground, such as the clamour to try and escape the country. People hear warnings all the time. They know the risk living in Afghanistan. They see multiple bomb attacks, suicide attacks, uh, targeted gunfire, ambushes over the years. But that is how desperate people are, is that even though those warnings are out there, that they still cluster in those numbers around the gates. And uh, you know, I can't begin to describe really quite how many people were there, quite how closely they were uh, packed together in that relatively small area by each gate. It's not just one gate, it's multiple gates trying to get out. So any one of those gates, you're talking about significant numbers of people together, tightly packed. If there's some kind of IED or suicide attack, uh, that is likely to in inflict mass casualties. But again, we don't have those details at the moment. Uh, only into one of those crowds and causes mass casualties. And this is why last night it was so urgent and so imminent. And we heard the ambassador this morning, the U.S. ambassador to Afghanistan, say how serious a threat this was and that it was imminent. And they would not have put that alert out if they did not think someone was on their way to do harm. This is truly a nightmare scenario because you have a deadline of American forces getting out of there on August 31st, people trying to get out, and now this explosion at one of those gates, uh, it will surely shut down that whole area, and there will be a lot of questions about what the U.S. does next. One of the things President Biden has said again and again is that he is concerned about U.S. troops. He wants them out of there because the danger is increasing. Uh, you also have to wonder how, if they had such incredible intelligence intelligence on this, how they were not able to somehow try and stop this. That's obviously an incredibly difficult thing to do, but this is exactly the kind of thing they were tracking for several days. Yes. And, and despite, yes, we heard those warnings urging Americans and Afghans not to come to the gates unless they had been specifically ordered to do so because of this threat that they obviously deemed credible. We also heard from Secretary of State Blinken saying there was really no deadline, that August 31st deadline, to get those 1,500 Americans who we believe are still there in the country. But obviously, what does this do to that operation, Martha, to have a terror attack like this, the worst case scenario happen, what Americans were concerned about, which what they were warning about, but to actually have it happen, what does it do to the process uh, that were already was going to be a difficult task over the next few days? It, it really devastates that process. And again, that panic that was already there. I mean, seeing the scenes from last night, hearing flashbang grenades go off to try to break up the crowds, to try to warn them to get away. There is absolute panic in Afghanistan for people trying to get out. Secretary Blinken says, yes, we will keep trying to get people out, but he has not given any sort of plan on how that will happen. How will you get these vulnerable Afghans out? And now, today, they're facing either a stampede, the Taliban, or ISIS bombers. And, and that really is what it comes down to for all Afghans, and especially those vulnerable Afghans and American citizens. And those American citizens are not all out of there. Uh, one of the documents I got last night was passports uh, of two young children and an American mom unable to get out. Wow. All right, Martha Raddatz, we know you're staying on top of this for us as we continue to get more information. We're going to turn to Willie Martinez, our Pentagon producer, who does have some more information about where this explosion specifically took place. Willie. 
Hey, Amy, we are hearing from a U.S. official that uh, confirms to ABC News that the explosion did occur at Abbey Gate. Uh, that is the location that Ian Panel was just talking about a moment ago. Um, this U.S. official says that they are currently assessing casualty numbers right now, um, that the situation remains very, very fluid on the ground um, as they try to respond, um, and that it may be said that the situation itself may be ongoing. But for now, uh, we do have confirmation that this was at the Abbey Gate, which is one of the main entrances to the airport, uh, where thousands of people have been gathered. Um, and on the other side, you have Western forces, mostly American troops, uh, standing guard there, uh, sorting uh, individuals as they come by. Um, as we've heard um, from Ian and from Martha, um, the big threat over the, uh, the emerged last night about the possibility uh, that ISIS, Corazon, and an ISIS offshoot uh, might be planning some kind of an attack targeting civilians. And so that's why the, the messages were sent to American citizens not to go to um, any of the gates uh, to, or the approaches to the airport, but confirmation now that this was at the Abbey Gate. And, and Louis, this may be uh, one of the worst case scenarios because as we heard Ian reporting and you just reiterated there, thousands of people uh, at, at last count were there despite those warnings from Western officials to please stay where you are, to not come to the airport. Uh, this potentially is one of those worst case scenarios, correct? It is because we've seen the numbers of people who have gathered there on, on the other side of the fence, if you will, in those gates, um, desperate people holding up uh, documents trying to get past the Western security forces that are there. All right. Uh, that was our ABC yeah. special yeah. report. Yeah. Right now we're going to go ahead and take a live look at what they've been covering. And this is uh, the Kabul airport. And the Pentagon officials are saying there has been an explosion of some sort if you're just joining us now. And they're not sure if there are any casualties. Of course, we've been following this right now. We're continuing to monitor the ABC News special report. That's what you're seeing in the squeeze back second screen right here. Uh, again, we're looking live at Kabul International Airport where it is approximately 6.30 in the evening. They're about nine and a half hours ahead of us. We will continue to monitor this developing situation right here on GMSA at nine. It looks, sounds like we're gonna get some sort of update perhaps at the bottom of the hour, but right now back here at home, Let's go outside with live cam right now and see how things are looking out there as we kick off our weathercast with Justin Horn. Justin. Good morning to you guys. Uh, clear skies right now. We're expecting uh, clear skies for the first half of the day. By the second half of the day, though, we will start to get some showers and thunderstorms, I think. There's about a 30% chance for most of us today. 82 right now. Dew point is at 73, so still very humid. Heat index will be an issue today. We're thinking 96 for high, and there's your 30% chance rain that I mentioned. Generally between 2 and 8 o'clock, that's our time frame for uh, best chances to get any rain. Temperature-wise, 70s in the Hill Country, 80s elsewhere, 80 in Pleasanton, 80 in Divine, 78 in Uvalde, 83 up there in New Braunfels. And we have to mention the tropics, a developing system down there in the Caribbean, and we think that this likely will become a tropical depression or a tropical storm later today. Could be Ida. The latest computer models do take it into the Gulf of Mexico, but most of the effects would be well east of us. We're going to talk more about that. We're going to go into more clarity on where this may be heading. We'll have more coming up in just a bit, guys. All right. Thanks, Justin. For now, let's look at today's Night at Nine. The clock is ticking in Afghanistan. The State Department sending out a warning last night for U.S. citizens at Kabul airport gates to leave immediately. Officials say as many as 1,500 Americans are still in Afghanistan. Military officials say evacuations may need to be stopped in order to meet the August 31st deadline to fully withdraw American troops. In less than six days, the last American service member who boards the last flight out of Kabul will mark the end to a costly 20-year war in Afghanistan. U.S. officials say the final days will consist of warplanes blowing up weaponry used to safeguard the evacuation. Today, the Israeli Prime Minister and U.S. President will meet at the White House. Israeli officials say there are two main goals for the visit. The first, simply meeting President Biden for the first time, and the second, to discuss the situation in Iran. Governor Greg Abbott issued an executive order extending his current policy of prohibiting vaccine mandates across the state of Texas. The order also bans any public or private entity that receives public funds from requiring proof of vaccination. COVID hospitalizations in the U.S. have topped 100,000 for the first time since January. Meanwhile, Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson have new data showing their booster shots dramatically increase protection. A CDC advisory board is expected to meet next week to discuss the rollout of booster shots. 
Fire crews are fighting a new wildfire in California named the South Fire. Officials say this quick moving fire prompted evacuations overnight, forcing families out with nothing but the clothes they were wearing. Over 500 acres have already burned. Mortgage applications are on the rise. The Mortgage Bankers Association says applications rose by 3% last week, its highest since early July. Experts say mortgage rates are on a slow decline. A new Fitbit tracker coming out this year will monitor your mental health. The Fitbit Charge 5 will be able to keep score on how mentally and physically ready you are for the day. It will recommend things like yoga or a workout based on your mental health score that day. The $180 device ships this fall. Mountain Dew is coming out with a new flavor, mixing spicy with its signature caffeinated citrus soda. Flamin' Hot Mountain Dew makes its debut Tuesday online. And that's today's Night at Nine. And again, if you're just joining us, there's been an explosion outside Kabul's International Airport. No word on casualties. We are tracking that. Among the top stories we're following here at home, a woman is dead this morning following a rollover crash on the city's northwest side overnight. San Antonio firefighters say the woman in her 40s was driving along the I-10 access road between Vance Jackson and West Avenue. That crash happened around 1230 this morning. Police say she lost control of her vehicle and the vehicle went up an embankment and rolled over. Firefighters tried to rescue her, but they were not not successful. She died at the scene. At this time, it's not clear what caused that crash. Two men are in the hospital following a head-on collision on the city's northeast side. It happened around 1.30 this morning on Warsbach Parkway near Heroes Stadium. That's right. That's where San Antonio police say a man in his late 20s was driving the wrong way and collided with another driver. That wrong way driver was pinned in his vehicle and had to be rescued. The man in the other vehicle who was driving the right way actually fled the scene, but officers caught up to him later in the Heroes Stadium parking lot. Both men were taken to the hospital and are expected to be okay. Police are looking for the person who shot a woman while she was sitting in her car. This one happened around 930 last night in the 4800 block of Raybon Drive, just south of Eisenhower on the northeast side. And that's where San Antonio police say the man walked up to the woman's vehicle and shot her twice before taking off. The woman was taken to Bamsey in critical condition, but she is expected to survive. She told officers she did not know the suspect. Another big top story today. We mentioned it in the night at nine. Governor Abbott extending his executive order to ban any type of vaccine mandate here in the state of Texas. For a closer look at this new order, we turn to digital journalist Ferris Sabawi. Good morning. Hey, good morning, y'all. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for joining us. Well, first of all, can you explain what is in Governor Abbott's latest executive order? Yeah, Stephanie, it was not long ago. It was actually just a few days ago that I was here talking about how the FDA's approval of the Pfizer vaccine could lead to more mandates, kind of like SAISD's vaccine mandate. Um, but once that FDA approval came through, Abbott has decided to expand his executive order, banning any coronavirus mandate uh, for any three of these vaccines, regardless of FDA approval. He views it as the fact that the two other uh, coronavirus vaccines don't yet have FDA approval, and he wants to prevent what he calls a patchwork of vaccine mandates or no vaccine mandates throughout the state. He's looking at this like it's a, a uniform policy across the state of Texas. Ferris, you mentioned SAISD. Do we know how this order might affect SAISD's vaccine mandate? Yeah, Mark, that's a great question. It does look like this executive order does conflict with SAISD's vaccine mandate. Now, yesterday, district officials did release a statement saying that they are planning to go forward with the planned mandate. But of course, that could invite some legal trouble uh, or legal challenges from the Attorney General Ken Paxton. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as that progresses. And will lawmakers be taking up the issue during the special session? Yeah, part of this ex executive order, Stephanie, was uh, Governor Greg Abbott decided to add the issue of vaccine mandates uh, to the special session that is ongoing right now. Of course, uh, the legislature has so many other issues to consider as well, so it's unclear if they're going to get there in time by the end of the 30-day special session. But it is something that has now been charged to them to consider. So they may end up passing their own state law, deciding on either banning a coronavirus vaccine mandate or if they allow one to go through, uh, maybe they will set out what exemptions uh, will allow people to, uh, you know, will allow people to avoid getting the vaccine if they choose not to. Uh, of course, like I said, they have so much to discuss, though. So we'll have to keep an eye on the special session, see if they end up uh, getting to that topic.
All right, KSAT digital journalist Ferris Sabawi with some insight and analysis. Thank you, Ferris. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. You too. You too. And time now, it's 9.13 and about 81 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, a school board meeting here in our area, uh, actually here in Texas, turns graphic. A man strips down to his underwear to prove a point. His message later in the newscast. But first. And you are looking live at Alamo Stadium, better known as the Rock Pile. We are getting ready for week one of high school football. The excitement has filled the air already this early in the morning. RJ's here, we're gonna talk about what you can expect as fans. We've got the AD of SAISD here to talk about tonight's opening night of high school football. Woo, we're excited. Stay with us, we'll be right back. It's gonna be a lot of fun. What you guys need to know as you guys head out to the action this weekend across the area. A huge night for high school football. Over 100 teams will play under the lights tonight for the first game of the season. For many athletes, it's the first time they've hit the field for an actual game in over a year. But what about the fans? Will mom and dad be required to wear a mask in the stands? David and RJ live over at Alamo Stadium here in San Antonio this morning getting some answers. Hey guys, good morning to you. I don't know if you can feel it in the studio, but just standing here next to the turf, it's hot, but you can feel the excitement already building for week one and the first night of high school football. Ryan Clancy, the uh, athletic director of SAISC, joins us now. And first off, let's just start about the excitement. Let's start with that. You're a product of SAISD, Highlands High School. What's it like for you to walk out on this field knowing that we're actually going to have a kickoff tonight in San Antonio for high school football? I don't know if there's any time in my life when I don't walk out of those corridors and come onto this field that I'm not excited. It could be August, May, June. It doesn't matter. Anytime I walk into this facility, I get excited because there's a lot happening. Our events and our activities are so great for our kids, so they must be excited after last year's abbreviated season that we had. Everybody should be excited. Even the whole city of San Antonio should come out and support our kids and every district around us. Yeah, Brian, obviously a lot of excitement across the area, but there are some things that fans and parents need to know before they head out to stadiums. Uh, just let people know what SA, SAISD is doing. And uh, we talked earlier about some digital tickets and some food options that they might have available here at the stadium. Yeah, well, first thing that everybody needs to be compassionate and considerate of everybody, regardless of what stadium that you go to, <clears throat> and respect everybody's decisions when it comes to masking and social distancing. <clears throat> here at Alamo Stadium and our outdoor facilities, we we, we encourage masking and social distancing. It's not mandatory. We have certain protocols for our student athletes and our bands and cheers. They come into the, they have different entrances as, as they're not congregating with the, with the fans. Uh, as we go into our indoor facilities, everybody's masked and we encourage masking at all times, except when you're eating or drinking. Now you brought up digital ticketing. Pretty much everybody around the city has gone to some form of digital ticketing. So I encourage fans and everybody that's going out to support, go to the school district that's hosting the event, go to their Twitter accounts, go to their social media feeds and see where they purchase tickets and purchase tickets in advance. Every site probably has, or more than likely has some type of instructions. Come to the stadium ready to come into the game. Get excited, come here. When it comes to food, uh, now we're talking. Yeah, now we're talking yeah, about we're talking. food. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> some some school districts are, are bringing in food trucks, and but we're not here at Alamo Stadium. That might be the place where they're going to get some prepared food. But Alamo Stadium, right now, as we kind of go through the season, we're going to monitor the virus. We'll eventually get to some prepared food, but right now it's going to be prepackaged food, food and drink. So we're going to have things for the fans to come out. We just want everybody to be considerate of each other. And, you know, we, we talked a bit about how your, all your programs are great programs, but to just to, to see the, the football teams be able to practice and get prepared, unlike last year, and then come out here with a full schedule in mind to play, I mean, that's, you, can, you can just feel it. It, it. it just feels like football, especially oh. since we're sweating right now. Oh, we're sweating up, up, up a storm, but that's fine. You know, going out and seeing the kids practice, they're so appreciative because our school district has taken so many precautions to get them to this point. But even though we've gotten to this point, we still have 11 weeks of high school football that we want them to experience the entire season. Yeah. 
All right, and it all gets started tonight, guys, out here at the Rock Pile, one of the greatest nicknames in all of San in Texas high school football. Um, big games going on through here and also the SAISD Sports Complex as well. So we have a full schedule on KSAT.com right now for all your big game coverage. Yeah, you know, when I was in high school, you could smell the grass getting cut. Now it's just the uh, turf being prepared. But it's the same thing. It's the same excitement. Back to you guys. We're fired up. Can you tell? Yes, we can tell. Thank you, David and RJ. Hey, real quick, we have an update to the explosion outside of Cobbles Airport. Uh, that was at the entry gates and appears now that it was a suicide attack. That's according to some U.S. officials. That's right. And we're now getting new information that three U.S. troops, at least three U.S. troops, have been injured. We don't know how badly we're hurt. You're looking live right now where it's about uh, 645 in the evening in Kabul. Again, there's been an explosion. We believe a suicide bombing just outside Kabul International Airport, the source of so much um, Unbel you know, unbelievable sights over the last few days. And we're hearing now that the Pentagon update has been pushed back. As of right now, we'll keep you posted of when we will get an update from the Pentagon officials. We were hoping to hear from them at the bottom of the hour, but this is such a fluid situation. Information still coming into uh, the Pentagon, all branches of the U.S. government, of course, here into our newsroom. But we were going to be keeping you updated all morning long. But a very tense situation in Kabul now is uh, increased at least tenfold with the suicide bombing just outside the airport just uh, less than an hour ago, according to news reports. Ports. And here at home, it's 82 degrees and warming up just a little bit, Justin. Yeah, we're expecting some showers and storms today, guys. And we did just get an update from the Hurricane Center. We have uh, Tropical Depression 9 now developing in the Caribbean. We're going to start getting updates at 10 o'clock. This is going to be a pretty serious situation for folks along the Gulf Coast, and we'll explain that here in just a second. First, though, let's look at the satellite and radar. We've got showers out in the Gulf. That is not associated with anything tropical. That is just some rain. A little bit of energy working through, and we should get uh, some development here across our area as we get into the afternoon. Nothing right now. It'll probably take until afternoon before we start seeing some activity on the radar. In fact, we have clear skies here in San Antonio. Temperature is at 82. Calm winds. Feels like 87. That dew point uh, still high, 73. And looking at temperatures, 70s and 80s for the most part. You'll see these numbers jump up into the upper 80s by lunchtime and then mid 90s this afternoon 79 rock springs 84 del rio 82 right now in Catula. and here's the forecast high 96 heat index around 101 this is pretty similar to yesterday maybe just a little bit cooler thanks to some added cloud cover in a shower or two here's how the computer models look this is around six o'clock today notice it has some isolated downpours not everybody's going to get rain but if you're one of the lucky ones you could pick up a quick quarter of an inch of rain as we get into tomorrow, same story, showers and storms developing along the coast tomorrow morning and then by the afternoon, hit or miss downpours. And this continues Saturday and Sunday, by the way. Uh, forecast for the rest of today, again, 96. We'll start to add in a 30% chance of rain by 2, 3 o'clock, and that'll stretch through 8 p.m. this evening before temperatures drop off into the 80s. Okay, let's talk tropics now and what's going on again uh, down in the Caribbean. This is now going to be tropical depression number nine. Hurricane Center will start issuing advisories on it, starting to get more organized. We also have a tropical depression out in the Pacific. This is going to move north and probably stay to our west, but this will bring some rain potentially to the desert southwest. We're sort of flanked here by a couple of systems. This uh, would likely become Ida if it gets named, and I, I think it will. Tropical storm probably by later today or even into tonight could become a tropical storm. By Saturday, it's in the middle of the Gulf. We've got warm waters here, and this is going to move up towards the Gulf Coast. High pressure anchored on the East Coast should direct this thing north. So I feel pretty confident at this point that it stays east of our area. But anywhere from Houston to Panama City, Florida, this needs to be watched very closely. Hurricane and the computer models, uh, again, there still could be a lot of error here. But we think anywhere from Louisiana over towards, or even Far East Texas, all the way over towards the uh, Florida Panhandle, there's potential for a uh, land falling hurricane here. And look at the water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico. Upper 80s, there's a ton of fuel. This thing could strengthen as it, as it gets into the Gulf as well. And uh, if it does, here's a look at the scale, the Saffir Simpson scale. Uh, how strong could it be? There's still some questions there as well. But it could strengthen pretty rapidly, and we'll certainly keep an eye on it. 
Forecast for us calls for about a 30% chance of rain today, tomorrow, Saturday. We'll drop it off a little bit on Sunday. And at this point, looks like tropical moisture stays to our east. We'll be on the drier side of things. That'll boost the temperatures a little bit too. Upper 90s uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. But as I mentioned, anyone from, say, Houston all the way over to the Florida Panhandle, this uh, needs to be watched very, very closely, guys. All right. Thank you, Justin. Still ahead on GMS 89, why steal one package when you can take the whole truck? How this police chase with a stolen Amazon truck ends coming up in your morning headlines. In your morning headlines, an Amazon delivery truck was chased down by police. A Texas staff strips down to make his case about mass mandates. An armed woman demands thousands of dollars be handed back to her. And more stories are making today's list. Alicia Beretta joins us live in the studio with all of these stories. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Well, just imagine someone banging on your door and demanding money. You have no idea about it. Mm, A little insane. Definitely get our attention. Terrifying. But here in Texas, this parent had a lot to say. He stripped down to expose his thoughts on mask mandates. James Akers is a parent at Dripping Springs Independent School District, which is located about 25 miles west of Austin. Akers took the mic during the open session district board meeting on Monday and began with stating at work they make him wear a jacket and he hates it. Then he continued to take off his clothes piece by piece down to his boxers. Mr. Akers, I understand, I believe you're a swimmer, but if you would mind putting your pants back on for a comment, that would be appreciated. Security guards began to make their way towards Akers, but he instead picked up his clothes and returned to sit in the audience. So. What was his point when it comes to mask mandates? Akers said, quote, it's simple protocol, people. We follow certain rules for a very good reason, end quote. And body cam footage has been released in the case of a white Louisiana state trooper allegedly using excessive force against a black motorist in 2019. We have to warn you, this story includes images viewers may find disturbing and tough to look at. The case is from May 2019. Video shows now former Louisiana state police officer Jacob Brown beating Aaron Larry Bowman as other offices hold Bowman down. Bowman can later be heard moaning, saying they hurt me. Court documents state Bowman was left with multiple lacerations, a fractured arm and broken ribs. Bowman's attorneys say Brown hit their client 18 times in just 24 seconds. I haven't done nothing, man. Well, fighting us ain't gonna help you, bud. I'm not fighting you. You are. Brown, the trooper, resigned from the state police in March, months after he was charged with second degree aggravated battery and malfeasance, but the case remains on hold until the FBI completes its investigation into systematic abuses against black motorists. And in the Houston area, this is what we began talking about. A woman beats on a door demanding her stolen money be handed back, but the homeowner had no idea what this person was even talking about. She was terrified. A ring doorbell video captured what a Harris County homeowner heard around 1030 Monday morning. The woman outside was banging on the door with both fists claiming $30,000 had been stolen from her and she was here to claim what was hers. But here's the thing. She had the wrong house. She started saying Maria and she started saying get Maria to come out. I said you, there's no Maria that lives here, but she was so angry. She wouldn't even listen to me. She was very, very scary how she came at me, you know, banging on the door, hollering, and she was just so certain she had the right property, the right house, and she did it. Thankfully, the homeowner never opened the door. The woman eventually walked away, but she did come back a few moments later, and this time armed with a pocket knife in her waistband. That's when the homeowner called 911. The woman left in a black Lincoln sedan, but investigators say the plate isn't registered to it. And in Massachusetts, an Amazon delivery van was speeding across several towns, but it wasn't to drop off any packages. The driver was avoiding police. Police say a man stole the delivery truck, leading police on a chase. The driver struck a police cruiser and continued on to a different town. State police troopers stepped in to help and deployed tire deflation devices, helping finally end that chase. Police arrested 23-year-old Cameron Mignon. He is charged with negligent operation of a motor vehicle, leaving the scene of a property damage crash and failure to stop for police. But authorities say more charges will likely be added. In Alabama, a decommissioned power plant was demolished in seconds using dynamite. Video of the implosion captured a man counting down to the explosion. 
Flashes appeared at the base of the stacks and four of the towers collapsed almost immediately, followed by two larger ones. There they go. The implosion took place yesterday at the old Colbert Fossil Plant, which was in business for six decades, and that began in 1955. The Tennessee Valley Authority says the implosion is part of its move toward cleaner energy options, including natural gas. Alicia, thank you very much. Folks, we want to get you updated on the situation in Kabul, Afghanistan. There is new information just coming into our newsroom. Yeah, we are hearing that there is a second explosion that has been reported near Kabul's airport. And also, it looks like they are saying that someone detonated a suicide vest at this point. That was the earlier explosion. explosion. We're hearing that three American troops have been injured. We're hearing that this is a part of a perhaps larger complex attack on the airport area. We know all the check points around Kabul International have now been closed down. Yeah, the airport gates processing evacuates, like Mark said, are now closed and the sources describing it as a complex attack. Of course, we'll keep you updated. And oh, earlier we told you that the Pentagon's update has been pushed back, so we'll keep you updated on that as well. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. Next, we're going to check in with David and RJ again. They're at Alamo Stadium with a look at some of the matchups happening for the first night of high school football. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are in the 80s now, started off in the humid 70s and working our way up, but there's chances of rain. Yeah, you wouldn't know it by looking at that picture, but yes, we'll start to see some clouds by about midday, and then by the afternoon, we should see some isolated showers and storms. Uh, there'll be some quick moving downpours. We're not getting a lot of rain out of it, but at least the uh, radar will become a little bit more active today. Let's look at the temperatures. Uh, Steph just mentioned it's humid out there. That's for sure. 82 at the airport, 77 Bernie stage, 79 Bandera, 81 right now in Tarpley. And the forecast calls for about a 30% chance of rain today, generally during the afternoon and maybe even into the evening hours. Temperatures will top out near 96 with the heat index 100 plus. Meantime, in the tropics, this is the, the big news this morning. Looks like we do have Tropical Storm 9. Uh, at least it's about to be named that. Uh, coming up at the top of the hour, Hurricane Center is going to start tracking this, or at least putting a track on it. And this could become Ida by the end of the day as it uh, makes its way towards the Gulf of Mexico. We do expect some strengthening at this point. Looks like a lot of the action will be well east of us. We're going to show you some of those models and uh, where we think the impacts will be. That's coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Quick look at Transguider, and there's 35 at Evans. We're still seeing a lot of traffic in that area. We had an accident earlier that really had things jammed up quite a bit. Uh, it's moving, and it's moving a fairly good clip right now. 35 at Evans. Be advised. And a huge night for high school football. Dozens of games taking place tonight for the first time in over a year. It's a big night. Let's check back in with David Sears and RJ Marquez live over at Alamo Stadium. Guys, what are some of the bigger matchups tonight? <laughs> Wait, uh, I think David's going to do a 40 yard sprint. <laughs> there are some big matchups. First off, I just, it, it, it feels like football, so I just wanted you to get a little, just oh, a little feel. We're just going to touch the turf. <laughs> oh, man, it's been a while. Yeah, they have these rubber pellets in there now. Yeah. Look at this, yeah, which makes it a little bit oh, easier. Doesn't on the, that feel on good? Can there? you feel that at home? Can you guys feel that in the studio? That's just, it, it just, it's, it's football. We can. It's helpful it's to, to, get to going. see you and do there that. There are some big, good. Huh? It's helpful to see <laughs> do you, you do that. The, the rubber pellets? <laughs> yeah. 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 See that? Yeah. yeah that just kind of brings you into into it. <laughs> Now, just as long as some kid doesn't come along and knock me out, you know, try to tackle me. That would be a good thing. So. You don't want to get in the way of one of these, uh, one of these linemen there's, here. There's some big dudes out here. Um, matter of fact, there's going to have their, uh, let's see, we got the schedule here. We can pop that up for we you do. and talk about what uh, what Thursday night looks like to yes. kick off the football season. An action, an action packed schedule, David. One thing I do want to say before we get into some of the key matchups is download our BGC app. That's the easiest way to find all of this information, score, schedule, highlights, and of course, all of the action kicking off tonight. Uh, Madison Clemens, David, that's one of the big ones here. Yeah, Madison Clemens. Matter of fact, that's going to be on Me TV. Hey. We have a great partnership with Texas Sports Productions this year. They're going to be showing a lot of games on Me TV, and they're going to be providing us with a lot more highlights. So every Thursday night with Greg Simmons, big game coverage, and every Friday night, especially mm -hmm. on Friday nights with Greg Simmons and big game coverage, you're going to see a lot more highlights. And then, of course, they're all going to be on our website, kset.com. Yep. They're all going to be on the app. So we've just got a whole lot more high school coverage for you. So let's let, let's get Ooh. to some of these games. Okay. Matter of fact, Greg is going to be over at Linoff Stadium going live today to get you ready for the Clark Harlan game. And then we got O'Connor and Brandeis. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 
There you go. Yeah, like that's that a one. major rivalry out yeah. there in Northside. That game actually sold out already. Huge rivalry there. Fredericksburg and Sam Houston here at here. Alamo Stadium. And then you've got Pearsall and Burbank over at SAISD, the sports complex over there at Burbank. And then our Me TV game, Madison and Clemens, they're at Linoff. Mm-hmm. And then Del Rio is going to take on SA Veterans Memorial over there at Rutledge Stadium. Man, can you ask for a better Thursday night <laughs> kickoff to the season than uh, some of those games? Right no, there? no, what a great start. And as David was mentioning, uh, when we talk about the app and streaming these games, uh, that's where you're going to be able to be able to stream these games is on the uh, BGC TV app. So what we're going to ask you to do is become a KSAT insider. Just fill out just your email, a couple of information there. It's easy, it's free, and that's the best way to stream a ton of games. And this is just the start, David. I mean, it's going to be a fun, fun yeah. season. Mark and Steph, I know you've already filled that out, but in case you haven't, RJ would be more than happy to help you fill that out when he gets back to the station. And you at home, fill that thing out. So uh, football's back. They went through, actually, they got to go through their their fall camps full this year, other than what happened last year and right. actually got a, got a full schedule. And if you're going to any of these games, mm-hmm. you know, if you're if you're not in SAISD, you know, double check with your with your school district and make sure you're prepared to to get to the game. A lot of the tickets are now online. You can't buy tickets at the stadiums. Right. They're asking you to uh, wear a mask outside. It's not mandated, but they would love for you to wear a mask mm-hmm. and social distance and just be courtesy to your neighbors. So so just be aware of some of the things going on when you get to the stadium. And of course they're going to have some food at the stadium. It may be pre packaged, but they're still going to have food. So, <laughs> so we're good there and one more thing i know there's a lot of stuff that we're throwing at you guys we're super excited about this uh david and i are actually going to be out at a game tomorrow we're calling it the pregame tailgate party that that's the working name pre-game right party. now the pregame party yeah so we're going to be doing a live stream on ksat.com out there at one of the big games uh that we have featured throughout the week it's going to be every friday so really excited about getting out there interacting with the fans cheerleaders rotc all, all the students that make everything happen yeah. How eating. fun. <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah, a little eating. I'm, I'm telling you, this is going to be one of the best football seasons you've ever witnessed on KSAT 12. BGC, uh, big game coverage. We are excited. Good department. luck to all the kids and coaches and staff and parents yeah. as we head yeah. into the upcoming season. RJ and yeah. David, thank you. Live from Alamo Stadium. Yeah, thank you guys. Have lots of fun. <laughs> Time now, 944 and about 83 degrees right now. We'll be right back. Hi, right, welcome back. It's about 947. You are taking a live look at the Kabul airport right now. Of course, this is the scene where earlier there were actually multiple explosions there and injuring three U.S. servicemen. That's right. There were terror attack warnings going into this morning. There had been chatter of possible attacks in and around Kabul International Airport, and that appears to have happened and be in progress. Potentially, the Pentagon reporting an unknown number of casualties outside what is called the Abbey Gate there at uh, the airport. All those processing centers and gates have now been shut down as they deal with what the Pentagon is calling a quote unquote complex attack. Uh, on the airport, uh, we're hearing up to three U.S. troops may have been hurt. And uh, we're also hearing from sources that the explosion happened there outside of the airport and that someone may have detonated a suicide vest. That's for the first explosion. That's correct. And just in the last 15 minutes, reports of a second explosion. So uh, we're trying to get more information right now. Not seeing a whole lot on this live picture right now. Power is on in and around Kabul International Airport. As of just a couple of hours ago, we saw uh, U.S. Air Force aircraft still sitting on the tarmac as evacuations were slowing, but we're continuing. And right now it's about 7, almost 7 p.m. their time. They are nine. Yeah, it's 719 p.m. there PM at mm. their time. And here it's 949. Let's go ahead and check in with Justin as things heat up. We're at 83 degrees now. 83, very warm and humid, and we're watching some showers out in the Gulf of Mexico. Some of this activity will work its way inland. We'll see some more showers and storms this afternoon. So let's first start with the satellite and radar. Nothing over us, nothing imminent. In fact, we have clear skies, or mostly clear skies here around San Antonio right now. But you see some of that action down there south of Houston. That may eventually work in, and I think we'll have some energy working east to west across our area today. There's a scene outside, mostly sunny. 82 at the airport. We're up to 83 stints in low 80s, Kelly and Randolph. The satellite picture shows very little and uh, temperature 79 Bernie stage 84 in Castroville. You're at 83 Kennedy 85 out in Gonzales and just about everybody's seen clear skies. Uh, but you're noticing some clouds starting to develop 
Uh, that's we're going to see more of that. We'll see this clouds bubble up during the afternoon and, and just about everybody has about a 30% chance of some showers and storms today. Temperatures obviously will be warm in the mid to upper 90s. Heat index values 100 plus another day of that and we'll probably have several more days of that forecast around 6 o'clock today shows those isolated showers and storms. If you're lucky quarter of an inch of rain if you're underneath one of these things, but they will be few and far between. Uh, is that typical afternoon pop up stuff and we'll see that again tomorrow too. I think tomorrow morning some showers and storms along the, the uh, coast and then by the afternoon. Same exact story. That'll be the case Saturday and Sunday too. forecast calls for high temperature right around 96. Easterly winds will be light today and that 30% chance of rain stretches from about 3 p.m. through about 8 o'clock this evening. Here's the current setup when we're talking about the tropics and I just got word that the track is out for what is tropical depression number nine. We have tropical depression out in the Pacific too, but that's going to track west, take a lot of the moisture west of us. This is tropical depression number nine. That's Jamaica right there. And I didn't have time to pop the track up on our graphic here, but what I can tell you is the Hurricane Center pretty much agrees with what we're thinking with the spaghetti models. High pressure anchored off to the east is going to drive this thing generally north, anywhere from Houston to Panama City, Florida needs to be on the lookout for this. This likely will be a strengthening system. We think it'll become Tropical Storm Ida later today, and I do think it will become a hurricane once it hits the Gulf. The waters are warm and there will be some intensification. So again, this is sort of the area we want to watch. Folks in Houston still need to uh, really keep an eye on this, and uh, this is uh, going to be a, a, a big player in the forecast as we go forward in time. I mentioned the water temperatures in the 80s, so this would allow for this to strengthen. Conditions are good for that, and uh, this could become a big problem for the Gulf Coast. I'd say almost uh, this weekend, we've sped up the time frame a little bit too. Uh, looks like Sunday, this thing could be making landfall again somewhere along the Gulf Coast. For us, 30% chance of rain will be on the dry side of things, so we'll taper those rain chances off uh, Sunday, Monday with uh, mostly sunny skies and warm temperatures too. upper 90s Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll be right back. We want to get you up to speed on the breaking news out of Kabul, Afghanistan. You're looking live right now where it is early evening. The Pentagon confirming there was at least one explosion near a gate at Kabul's airport, which resulted in unknown number of casualties. Uh, we heard from sources that there were three uh, U.S. troops who were hurt, injured. Uh, we are also reporting that uh, earlier there was a grave uh, specific ISIS-K terror threat targeting crowds around the airport and the U.S. Embassy in Kabul advised U.S. citizens at the airport gates to leave immediately. We got initial reports of a second explosion. This comes as the U.S. and other countries race to evacuate ahead of the president's August 31st deadline. More coming up at noon. Bye, guys.